Hi everybody, this is Miss Clemmie and welcome to the screencast on skin structure and function. So over here is our main topic today is the skin. But if you look at it from an overall perspective of body defenses, the skin is basically our external defense to act as a fence, to act as a barrier to keep everything out. If the skin is breached uh, or a pathogen enters from some other part of your body and opening, um, then we have a lot of internal structures that get produced like antibodies. We have cells that go hunting for those invading pathogens. But everything really starts with body defenses by taking a look at the layers of the skin. So without further ado, let's go for it. When we're looking at the skin, we're going to begin today by starting with the big macroscopic structures and what they do. And then we're going to break those down into smaller components of their microscopic level to take a look at how they do those big things on a small scale. Here we go. The first macroscopic function of the skin is pretty obvious. It's to offer protection. Now, collectively, all of these things, I've been talking about the skin because that's primarily where we're going to focus, but all of these things belong to that organ system called the integumentary system. So I don't want to forget about the other components in that system. So we'll start with the hair, and the hair obviously is a, is a physical barrier that prevents stuff, you know, prevents UV rays from hitting the skin. It just prevents things from from hitting those precious uh, skin cells. The nails, also part of the integumentary system, offer um, protection from, say, abrasion. Think back to our ancestors who had to use our nails as some sort of claw for digging, for using tools. So it just offered a little more protection for our skin. And then finally, the skin itself, which we see in this picture, has lots of different layers. And so those layers can offer protection. They can offer protection from, say, uh, abrasion, from just everyday wear and tear. In fact, some parts of your body have thicker layers of skin based on where they are on your body and, and what you use them for, like your hands and the palms of your, palms of your hands and your feet. Um, we're going to look at how the skin protects against fluid loss, especially being organisms that live on land. The skin pr can protect and cushion against impact. And what we already mentioned, the skin is a great protector against foreign invaders. So we'll take a look at some of these specific levels of protection later on in the video. The next big picture macroscopic function is temperature regulation. So we look at both components here of the integumentary system, and the first we'll look at is hair. And hair uh, basically helps to keep heat trapped near the skin. <clears throat> For example, um, we get goosebumps when we're cold. And so if I draw, well, this isn't going to be very good, but if I draw a hair follicle, and so this is like the top layer of skin, there's the hair coming out, and um, there's some muscles, and this is going to get even worse. There's some muscles down here that can contract, and when they con they contract when it's cold, and that allows your hair to kind of stand up a little bit more, hence goosebumps, and it gets more hair or more space. Let me see, more space between here and here to trap body heat that would normally get released. So goosebumps help to keep us warm, and that's because the hair muscle. Um, called the erector pili is contracting and getting that hair to stand up to act as a, a bigger, cushier blanket to trap heat. From the level of skin and temperature regulation, there's a lot of different structures just like in protection. So if you think about the things that you do to keep cool or to stay warm, we have sweat glands to help cool us off. The skin also has a vast supply of blood vessels that can control temperature as well and has a collection of or a tissue of layer of fat that helps to keep body heat in as well. And we'll take a closer look at those later on. <coughs> Excuse me. The last macroscopic function is sensory reception. 
As you may have guessed, the skin is going to have a lot of different receptors for lots of different types of senses. And the hair, the hair is going to have one major type of uh, receptor located around its root. And those nerves are going to sense changes in position um, if your hair gets pulled so that you can sense that um, something's happening to your hair. And the skin is going to offer lots of different types of protection, as you can see in the picture. There's thermal receptors for temperature. There's a bunch of different receptors for different kinds of touch. And then there's re uh, receptors for pain, which we'll talk about later. So there you go. There's three main receptors for skin. So to recap, we just went through the macroscopic structures and functions, and now we're going to break those down into their microscopic components. So here was our first one, protection, temperature regulation, and the one we just talked about, number three, sensory reception. So we're going to focus on protection first and looking at each of these microscopic levels of protection. Here we go. So to offer protection, there are several layers of the skin that do this. So we're going to zoom in on the cells that are primarily found in the epidermis, the top layer. And then we'll delve deeper into the dermis and hypodermis. But for now, we're going to look at the cells that combine to form the epidermis tissue. And then ultimately, all of those different tissues will cover and form the whole skin. So we're going to delve into the uppermost tissue right now, looking at protection in the epidermis. So here's our, our microscopic tissue, here's our microscopic function. So in this top tissue, let's give you some context here. We've zoomed in on the top level, so here it is. And you can see the separation here, the epidermis from the dermis. And there are cells way at the bottom here, you can see them in purple, called keratinocytes. And their job is to, as they produce Throughout their lifetime, they're going to produce a protein called keratin. And keratin is a waterproofing substance. So if you can imagine this little cell right down here, I'm actually going to switch to a different color. There we go. So this cell down here, it's going to start producing keratin. And there's going to be cells below it that divide and start to push it up farther and farther. So as that cell produces keratin, it basically dies. And by the time it's at the very top of the epidermis, it's just providing a waterproofing a protection and, a, and protection from abrasion because it's just a cell membrane with keratin in it. It's no longer alive. And those cells we lose all the time from our top layer of skin. So that whole process of filling up the keratinocytes with keratin is called keratinization. So what happens is they get farther and farther up to the top of the epidermis, and then eventually they're just sloughed off. The next uh, function of the epidermis is to provide UV protection. And so to do this on a microscopic level, we have a new type of cell, melanocytes. And they're also located about the same location as the keratinocytes were. But their job is to produce a different protein, and it's called melanin. Now, if we look at a sketch of a melanocyte, you'll see that they have these little appendages that almost make them look like tentacles or like an octopus. And the job of those appendages is to spread out and distribute these little specks, these little pigments of melanin. The job of melanin is to protect precious, precious DNA in nearby cells from UV radiation. Because we know that UV radiation mutates DNA. So if we can get more and more of that melanin, almost as an umbrella, to protect our cell's DNA, that's going to put us in a better position to prevent skin cancer. That's a look at the epidermis and how it offers protection from those two microscopic perspectives. We'll talk about cushion later on in the video. But now we're going to move to temperature regulation. And temperature regulation happens in the cells found in a different tissue in the dermis. So let's go to the next layer down. In the dermis, our, this is our microscopic tissue and our microscopic function. There are two structures that help to do this. <coughs> the first are blood vessels. And if you notice, blood vessels, because we are in the dermis, do not 
enter the the epidermis. So they're found in the in the dermis, and basically, they can do two things. In this picture on the left, they're dilating, called vasodilation, and that means they get larger, wider, and more blood can go into these blood vessels. So if we increase the blood flow, that means that more heat in that blood can get released and we can cool down. On the other hand, if our blood vessels vasoconstrict, that means less blood flow and then more heat is conserved. More heat, more blood is then rooted to our core areas to keep our core warm. So blood vessels can both heat us up and cool us down. Sweat glands, on the other hand, can basically cool us off. So sweat glands, the, the, the production of sweat isn't necessarily the cooling aspect. It's the evaporation of the sweat from our skin that allows a cooling effect. And interestingly enough, it's the evolution of our skin to have lots and lots of sweat glands that's helped make us kind of get to the top of the food chain whereas most mammals they don't have sweat glands and so they can only cool off by panting and this has allowed us to cool our bodies down and able to and, and allow us to keep hunting those animals as they overheat and we can still cool down just by sweating so that was a look at the things in the dermis that help to regulate temperature we'll come back to the insulation um, aspect when we get to the last level of the skin. And now we're going to go to the third macroscopic function, the sensory reception. And this is going to be primarily in the dermis. So this is our tissue, this is our microscopic function. So the three that you should know are the pain receptors, called nociceptors. And then there's a collection of mechanoreceptors. There's here, here, we talked about this one already in the hair, and this guy, and don't forget about him. The mechanoreceptors respond to touch, but there are lots of different kinds of touch. So we have very light touch, and we'll find that closer to the surface. The Meisner corpuscles deal with deeper pressure. There are components, Ruffini endings, and you can kind of see them, they're broader. They deal with uh, sensing stretch. And the Piscinian corpuscles respond to vibrations. So those are all under the umbrella of mechanoreceptors. Touch, pressure, stretch, and vibrations. And then the last type of receptor are thermoreceptors, which respond to hot and cold. And those are, as you can see, found in the dermis. So all we have left is the last layer of skin and the last couple functions. Here we go. So now we're going to look at cells that are in the hypodermis, the lowest layer of skin. And those cells provide two different functions. So our microscopic function is insulation and cushion. And those are all found in the hypodermis. But fortunately, the adipocytes provide both of these functions. Adipocytes are just basically fat cells. And so they help to keep heat in, so they offer insulation. And because we have a pretty thick layer in the hypodermis, they offer cushion from impact. And then they're a protective layer for our underlying muscles and organs and tissues. So that's a look at the microscopic structures that make up the macroscopic structure that is our skin, our hair, and our nails in the integumentary system. And that's just one small portrait of how our body provides defenses to keep our body in homeostasis. Thanks for listening.